Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior character artist. In this little tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at layers in ZBrush. We're going to use an old model of mine. Uh, it was a fun little superhero model I did. It's for fun. Um, but I want to show you what we can do with layers. I'm just going to zoom in uh, to the head. All right, there we go. All right, uh, as you can see, it's just a simple, it was a simple face, simple model. Didn't get super detailed. This was several years ago before you had to worry about, you know, creating all the um, pores and everything in the skin, etc. Uh, it was enough that, that we could get by with what we were uh, working on. And this is just, just a fun model. Uh, it's a character I did hoping it could get into a game, but uh, the game itself, in fact, got canceled. So I kept the model because it was a fun model. I'd done it for fun and enjoyed it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use this to illustrate what we can do with layers. So as you can see, we have our subtools uh, palette on the right-hand side. But if you scroll down, there's this, the next palette underneath it is layers. So if I click that, layers works a lot like uh, what you might be used to in Photoshop. It's very simple to use. Uh, you can get really complicated with it, but we're going to try and just keep things very, very simple for this introduction. Okay, to create a new layer, all you have to do is click this button right here. Now again, anytime you hold your mouse over something before you, you click it, you can actually see it says it's a new... See how it says new? So I'm going to go ahead and click it as a new layer. Let's go ahead and we're in our standard brush. I'm going to just left click and go to freehand. I'm going to go up to stroke. Make sure that we move this mouse average up to 15 so we have a nice smooth stroke. And I'm going to turn lazy mouse off. I don't need that right now. All right, we're going to do just a little bit of sculpting. Okay, I'm going to use my, I'm using my brackets key on my keyboard to scale my brush up and down on the fly. I'm going to go ahead and turn the intensity down a bit. Let's just do a little bit of sculpting. We're just going to Let's just bring his cheeks out. Let's bring the chin down and around. We're just going to create a, a nice alienish type of um, chin. We're going to let's pull out his brow a little bit, make it really angular. All right. Let's go ahead and do his nose. Just get a nice bump on the nose. Widen it out a little bit. There we go. Something like that. Okay, let's assume, okay, you know, we're playing around, we're giving some variations. The nice thing about this layer is I can now, if I grab the little slider, I can move that slider in and you can see how that changes. You see that? I can actually uh, go to the full extreme of what I did or I can modify it by something not quite as extreme by just. Uh, adjusting the slider. I'm just left clicking and holding this. The fun thing is, is I can actually go into the negative side and it'll actually start to carve into, as you can see, carves, uh, carves into the model to the same extent if I could do it all the way over to negative one. So it's a fun little feature. Let's go ahead and we've got that. I'm going to go ahead and add another layer. In this case, let's go ahead and I'm going to Hold down my control key for to create a mask. And I'll scale this one down a little bit and do another mask. And let's just do one more mask. I'm going to invert the mask by just holding my control key and tapping in the background. Okay. Let's go ahead and use the I'm going to click the my brush and I'm going to hit S. That'll that'll highlight all my S brushes. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the snake hook. Let's go ahead and, oops, I have RGB on. Let's turn that off. We don't want that on. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And that one. And I'm just being arbitrary about this. I'm just pulling it out. Okay. So there we go. We have a guy with has prongs, <laughs> for lack of a better uh, term. Let's go ahead and just adjust this down. And as you can see, I can now adjust this as well. 
And of course, you can actually do uh, animation and morph targets and stuff like that with this as well uh, by this method. But you can actually adjust this sort of stuff on the fly. The nice thing is, is I can adjust different elements at the same time. Like, let's say we like the long spikes, but we don't need the faces deformed. I can actually scale that in a little bit if I wanted to. All right, let's go ahead and pull this back down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and create another layer. I'm going to keep the snake hook going. And I'm just going to grab this one edge here and pull it out. I'm going to do it over here and pull it out. Let's get a couple on his cheek. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and go right into creating another layer. Okay. I'm going to mask his chin area. I'm going to blur it by just blurring the mask. You just hold down your control key and click on the mask itself. Okay, I'm going to invert that. And I'm going to go ahead and get down to our move action line. I'm going to click and drag an action line out. And I'm just going to pull his chin a little bit. There we go. All right. So as you can see, it's pretty deformed pretty quickly. Uh, again, this is one of those things that you need to show some variations to your art director on some of the things you can do. The nice thing is, is we can now vary any one of these as we want to. We can create the chin up a little bit. We can grab these things and move them in. We can pull these prongs back a little bit. We can go ahead and just warp it a little. Let's go ahead and adjust this. Let's do his jaw out a little bit farther. Okay. And in fact, let's go ahead and add another layer. And this one, I'm going to get on, click my brush, and I'm going to hit M for move. Now, there are several different types of moves. Okay, there's move parts, move topo elastic, move topological, and just move. Right now, we're just going to use move topological. That means it's going to try and retain my, if I hit Shift F, you can see my poly frame. By using Move Topological, it's going to try and keep the um, original design of my, or the original layout of my uh, wire frame. If I hit, go down to Shift D, you can see the original, the original um, wire frame. And the nice thing with Move Topological is it'll try and adjust for that. It'll try and keep all of that uh, very nicely. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm going to hit Shift F to turn that back off. And let's go ahead and pull this out a little bit. Oop, a little bit extreme. Let's go for something not quite as extreme. There we go. He's got a big lantern jaw. Okay. Again, we can now adjust that. We can pull it in a little bit. We get some ideas if we want to turn around and have this particular character, you know, hulk out or something. We'd be able to determine, you know, what looks best and to what degree we can uh, sculpt this guy out and warp him to get different effects. Let's go ahead and, and pull these out a little bit more. And I'll probably pull this down just as a starting right there. Nice. Now I can go ahead and save this file and then keep all these layers so I can go ahead and readjust them. Or let's assume for a second that your art director says, uh, you know what, that's perfect. That's what I'm looking for. That's the guy I want to see. You can now just bake all. That now creates it where that is your mesh. The nice thing is you have your subdivision still. Shift D and I can go down. Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D. That's what the lowest uh, subdivision of your model ends up looking like. That would be de technically be what you originally sculpted. So you'd probably have to clean this up a little bit so it stands out uh, a little bit to work for the deformations, obviously. But right then and there, you have like, okay, there's my character. That, that's what it looks like. And it was a simple, simple easy w uh, method with the layers because it's interactive. That's what I really love about the layers in ZBrush. You can adjust you know, you could have 20 different layers, and you can adjust each one to get exactly what it is you're looking for. Okay, and that's just for the sculpting. You could do the same with poly painting as well. You could do different uh, poly painting variations in layers and mix and match those as well. 
But this is just a very quick introduction. Uh, I think this gives you an idea of what you can do with that. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3dmotive.com. Thanks for watching.